So I've made a few videos now on how to calculate battery life and it's a very simple calculation. You take the milliamp hour rating of the battery, in this case it shows 2000 milliamp hours, divided by the average current draw of the device you're powering and that should give you the total number of hours you should expect out of the battery. But when we're talking about rechargeable lithium batteries, I always recommend you use a protected battery, meaning we've got some protection circuitry up here at the top. There's a little circuit board and that protects the cell from over discharge, overcharging, uh, over current. So if we short these leads here, it'll automatically disconnect the cell from the output. Now the major disadvantage of this protection circuitry here is that it has an operating current built into it. So I usually kind of bake this into the leakage current of the cell itself. And this isn't something I've ever really discussed before, but this circuit board is pulling current from the battery and should be added to the average current draw of your device. So this is going to eventually discharge this battery down. So this video is going to be all about that. We're actually going to measure what the current draw is from the protection circuitry here. So I've got a 650 milliamp hour battery here and uh, it was pretty easy to remove the protection circuitry board. This is just capped on tape here so we just have to remove the tape. It exposes the board and then it's easily removed. So that's what I did with this battery here. And you know, it'd be kind of an interesting experiment to see if I go to a larger battery, if the current draw changes at all. So once I removed the battery, I attached some leads to it so that now I can simulate a battery from the power supply. So let's do that now. We're going to apply 4.2 volts to the input of this protection board, 4.2 volts. And then let's look at the output here. Okay, so we've got 4.2 volts at the output. We're applying 4.2 volts. Let's clear the plot and take a measurement. Well, there you have it. We've got four microamps of average current draw from the protection circuitry, which is pretty low, but when you start thinking about it, we've got the trig board right here, <laughs> which only pulls about one or two microamps from the battery. So what's funny is, is whenever I'm doing my battery calculations, I kind of take one or two microamps as the sleep current, but really what I should be doing is adding this four microamps to that. So really, if I'm gonna power the trig board from a rechargeable lithium cell, I should really take that into account. And this is one of the advantages of using like a, an alkaline cell or something like that that doesn't have this protection, doesn't really need the protection. So you don't have this built-in leakage, which by request is why the V8 version of the trig board, of course, supports two AAA or AA batteries. And now that the trig board commercial is over, we can have some fun with the protection circuitry. You know, we've got all the gear hooked up to it. We know that it's pulling four microamps. Uh, we can actually see how the under voltage lockout works and... Uh, I've got the uh, circuit or the electronic load set up here so we can actually pull some current from it and see at what point does that trip out. So let's uh, play around with this a little bit. So we're at 4.2 volts now. Let's just bring it down to 3 volts, which is just before these things would trip out. So you see 3 volts is still on the meter, so we still have an output. And I've seen these trip out, you know, anywhere from 2.9 to 2.7. So let's just throw 2.9 and see what happens. All right, so as soon as I hit apply there, 2.9 volts, boom, the meter dropped out. So we still have the 2.9 volts on the input, and then it has disconnected the output. So that works pretty good. I was actually expecting this to cut out closer to 2.7 volts, actually, which is good to know because if you are operating off of a rechargeable cell and you have some low battery threshold built in or some kind of alarm built in, you should make sure that that threshold is higher than three volts, you know, maybe like 3.3 .3 volts or so. So you know when the thing is getting low on battery before it actually cuts out on you, then you would never know. Now here's something kind of interesting. If I bring the voltage back up to four volts, you see on my meter, I'm still sitting it at zero volts. It's still locked out. So if I actually bring out a lithium battery charger here and I plug that in, the second I do this, 
boom, we've got the voltage back there, we've got an output. So it's almost like there's something built into it that detects, you know, that it's charging back up and it's safe to turn the output back on. All right, and just for fun, let's get the uh, electronic load hooked up here. Okay, there we go, we've got four volts. So if I go ahead and try and pull some current here, Okay, we'll set it for its lowest setting, which is 100 milliamps. All right, let's go ahead and start that. There we go, we're pulling 100 milliamps from there. And over here on the OT, we see 100 milliamps being pulled from the battery. So that's pretty cool. Now let's slowly bring this up. And what's cool about this setup here is that you'll be able to see me increase the current and watch the voltage down here. So as soon as it cuts out on an overcurrent event, you'll see this immediately go to zero. 0. 0.2, 0. 0.3, 0. 0. 0.4, 0. 0.5, 0. 0.6, 0. 0.7, 0. 0.8, 0. 0.9, 1 amp. Come on, 1 amp, 1 amp. We're still, we're still there, 1 amp. 3.5 at the output. Uh, we're applying 4 volts at the input, but I don't know, I should actually measure that and see Maybe I can do that real quick. Okay, so I set this back up. So now I'm actually monitoring here on this meter the input voltage, and then we'll be able to see the output voltage right here, 3.7 volts. So that's also another interesting side effect of having the protection circuitry is that you are gonna have some built-in voltage drop, which is obviously dependent on the operating current, and this is really high. We're pulling an amp right now through this thing, and <laughs> on a 650 milliamp hour battery that I pulled this off of, that would be pulling a lot of current from this. And maybe on an ESP32, you would be down at, you know, peak currents of, you know, maybe 600 milliamps or so. So that's not too significant of a drop, 3.9 to 3.84, so that's not too bad. But getting back here, let's go ahead and try and kill this thing. So we're at an amp right there, 3.7 volts still there. 1.1, still hanging on. And my, I'm just gonna look at my meter. Let's look at the OT. Uh, yeah, 1.1, you can see it down here. 1.1, cool. And we're gonna keep bringing it up. 1.2, it's hanging on. 1.3, there's no way. 1.4, 1.5, 1. 1.6. 1. Oh, there we go. Okay, it tripped out. So the way the protection circuit there works for an overcurrent event is it doesn't latch the output off. Instead, as soon as the overcurrent event goes away, it will re-enable the output, which is why we've got the four volts reapplied. And the electronic load, as soon as it tripped out, the voltage collapses down, so this stops pulling current, so it clears the overcurrent and then everything goes back to normal. Now I bet you if I were to shock load this at even an amp, so if I just go one amp like that, 1.1, I bet it trips instantly. Yeah. Oh, nope, maybe not. 1.1. <laughs> so, and then if we just bring this up again, I'm just going to slam it. Boom, there it goes. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, just wanted to make a quick video on uh, the protection circuitry. Actually, more... I was more interested in what the uh, current draw is from this, that quiescent current draw of 4 microamps. I've never actually measured it. You know, so I've heard people talk about, you know, numbers like 10, 15 microamps, you know, just from the protection circuitry. So actually 4, I think, is actually some good news here. So anyway, I uh, hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching.